Welcome to geology, everybody. So let's jump in to plate tectonics by going right at what are the layers that make up this planet? Probably a lot of different ways we could lead this unit off, but I like going here because it can kind of act as a segue from what we talked about in the last unit, which was this whole, remember the whole planet formation thing out of the nebula where we talked about the Hadean period, Hadean, some people call it, where the earth would have been uh, very violent, like continuing impacts and very molten place. As soon as there was enough gathered together to basically between the kinetic energy of those things hitting and, and some radioactivity, get the inside of the earth hot. And when it got hot and it got enough that rocks could be, could flow essentially, what you would have happening is the heavier stuff, bad word to use, but the heavier materials would work their way down towards the center of the planet gravitationally. And the lighter, more buoyant ones then would get shoved up towards the top. And that gave us the first stages, as soon as, this, as soon as things started flowing, the first stages of a process that we'll call differentiation. Here we go. Like creating different layers, making them different as you work your way down. All right, so let's say, great. And we'll, we'll get into detail on like the cores, I think, at another time. And this one, what I want to really do, because it's really what plate tectonics is, and that's what this chunk of, of the course is going to be, is really think about towards the surface. So I stole this diagram right out of your textbook, your online textbook. Here it is in chapter 3, 3.1, same exact diagram. I screenshotted it. And then they have this little cutout, and they say, let's focus more in on that. That's what I'm going to do, but I want to redraw it and really try to analyze this a little bit because it's tricky. Um, so let's really like kind of hyper focus on exactly that and what's going on up here and define all these crazy new words. This is this is a lot of new vocab to throw at you uh, fairly quickly. So come on along, jump in. Let's start by I'm going to start by like splitting this in half, maybe a little less than half. To say there are actually two different ways to talk about the layers as you work your way down. And that can get frustrating for people. This is where this is where people get confused. If I were to say, let's base it just on its like composition. What is the stuff that makes up the rock layers as you work your way down? And again, keep in mind, we're only dealing with the surface here. I'm not we're not going to talk about the cores at all today. But towards the surface here, it's fairly simple. I'm going to draw a line right about there. If you're using these notes, the PDF is in the folder. I invite you to do the same. Or you can just watch it. We'll call this the crust. And below the crust, mantle. And we are not including the whole mantle here. That's going to go down. Again, we're only really dealing with what's going on up here towards the top. Okay? That's the easier one. It's just like, what is it? It's made of this, that's part of the crust, it's part of the, made of this, it's part of the mantle. Composition-wise, right? But if we want to talk about it behavior-wise, everything changes. And it's strange, and it can be uncomfortable for people to take the same stuff, the same earth, and like define it in two different ways with two separate sets of vocab. But that's the game. That's, that's what we got to do here, uh, for better or for worse. All right, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to continue this line over here. And I'm still going to call this the crust. Right? Below here is all still the mantle. But the way it works tectonically, the, what a tectonic plate is, is that there is some, some of the mantle that's rigid, that's stuck on the bottom of the crust here. So we're going to call this rigid upper mantle line that up so you can see it rigid upper mantle all right that's going to be that layer there these two this is the thing these two together that's got a term because behaviorally this crust and this rigid upper mantle work together and that term um, which I'm probably going to run out of space here, is the lithosphere, L-I-T-H-O sphere. 
barely squeeze it in there. Let me zoom a little bit too. All right, the lithosphere. Now the term rigid is really critical here. That is a, that's a, a very precise descriptor of how this works. It's rigid. That means it breaks. If I take this ruler and try to bend it, it's, I'm not getting very far, but eventually if I put enough pressure on it, it's going to snap. It's going to, and that, that is called rigid or brittle deformation. It cracks or breaks. Brittle is another term that you'll come across sometimes. So that's like a good way to describe the lithosphere. Maybe I can just go in the same box. That it's brittle deformation when it, when it breaks, when pressure is put on it. Take a ceramic dinner plate, drop it on the ground, it cracks into pieces. That's brittle deformation. That's why we have this separate name for it, because behavior-wise, that's its thing. Composition-wise, it's composed of two things, crust and part of the mantle that's like glommed onto the bottom, and they all act like Earth's crunchy outer shell. Pressure gets put on them, they break. That differs from what goes on immediately below it. Immediately below it, you've got an area where there's flow, where when pressure is put onto it, it can morph. It behaves as a solid, but a solid that can like squish. Play-Doh, silly putty, think that. With a different viscosity, certainly, but, but that kind of idea. This area we call the asthenosphere, A-S-T-H-E-N-O. And I tend, you tend to see two terms for this. You'll see ductal or um, plastic formation. And that means, again, think of, think of a really stiff, made of rock, silly putty, that, it, that when pressure is put on, it morphs. It doesn't crack because it's not rigid. It flows because it's ductile or plastic. So what you can get underneath these, and we'll talk about why plates move. There's been ideas in the past about, hey, this must be the thing that drives plate motion. That's not 100% accurate, but let's save that for another time. But regardless, there is convection going on in the cystinosphere. The rock can flow. And just like convection anywhere, breezes on the lake, uh, above above the uh, hot shower in a bathroom and then sinking on the other side. Things that heat up get less dense and rise. And then when they cool down, they get more dense and sink and you pr produce a convection cell. Right? That happens over here in this asthenosphere. And now down below from that, you can see that you get to like where it says stiffer mantle. And I'm going to chuck that in here just like barely. We're not to scale here. Fantastically, it's it's off. It's been worse, I suppose, but it's different mantle down below. So you got like crunchy mantle, flowy mantle, stiffer mantle. If you want those in like plain terms, and again, compositionally, we're good just saying eh, mantle. But now we got to break it down and say exactly how these things behave. That's what we got to go with, with lithosphere and asthenosphere. One more thing to chuck at you. We've, uh, the discovery of this line was done by, I believe he was Croatian. Mohorovic was his name. And he figured this out the same way we figured out a lot of the inside of the earth, by studying earthquake waves and seeing how they react as they work their way through these layers. And then we detect them. So that line that separates crust from mantle it's called the Moho in honor of him. That's not a layer. That's just a line to separate crust from mantle. Okay. Now at the end of the day, when we use the term tectonic plates, this is what we're talking about. The lithosphere is what makes up a tectonic plate. Parentheses made from lithosphere. So 
So you'll occasionally you'll you can you can if you if you watch carefully you can find this in some uh, earth science press that's maybe not quite scrutin you know scrutinized you'll see them referred to as crustal plates, and that should be a, an instant no no because these are not a tectonic plate is not just crust and I know this sounds picky but it's not just crust it's crust and rigid upper mantle as picky as it sounds when we get into what we got to do with uh, how all these different plates interact, what happens when they're coming towards each other? What happens when they're coming towards each other and one's made out of a continent and one's made out of an ocean? What happens when they're separating from each other? There's a lot, and it really depends on us having a pretty good grasp on what the heck a tectonic plate is, if we're, if we're going to go and discuss that. So a tectonic plate, a good term for it also is a lithospheric plate, because they're the same thing. Okay. Let me just do a quick check. I got everything. All right, it's looking good. I think we're good here. Now, I just threw a ton of vocab at you. Don't expect that one 11-minute video is going to uh, jam all that in there. That's going to take some review. That's going to take some, like, looking these up and seeing them in other sources, including checking out your textbook where I stole this diagram from. And now you can see maybe make a little bit more sense out of this. I think it, it takes a, a little bit of unwrapping to get into exactly how all of this works. One thing I didn't do today, but I'm okay with it, is the difference between continental and oceanic crust. We'll get we're, we're going to get there, but I'm not too concerned about that when it comes to this system. We'll do that when we start to talk about the plates interacting. All right, a lot of vocab. Check it out. There will be specific test questions on some of these and where some of them are located and how some of them behave. So uh, take a day or two and work on that. Welcome to our, what, this is our second module, right? Second module. Hope you're all doing well, and we'll talk to you soon.